So now that I've narrowed down the list of cars, trucks, SUVs from yep. our list in our previous videos, there's a lot of information, especially around range ratings. Yes, that gets a little confusing, doesn't it? I'm very confused. What do they all mean? What are all the, all, the different letters? What are the different types of range ratings? And basically, which one's more accurate too, probably. Exactly. Because they're not going to be all the same. Shall we take a look at those? We should take a look at those. Let's go. Hey, hey I'm Colin. And I'm Chris. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Amped Up Sibs. As you can see, it's getting a little bit colder. <laughs> was that supposed to be a shiver? <laughs> yeah, that was, it is getting colder. You're right, Colin. So that would be a good opportunity to talk about batteries and how they fare in the cold, but we really won't have any information on that for a couple more months. So that'll be an upcoming video. Today, we are going to talk about range ratings. Yeah, there seems to be a bit of confusion on them. There's quite a few different uh, ratings. Different countries use different ratings. And I uh, thought we should probably talk about which ones are more accurate and what to uh, expect when you read about their ratings. And they're usually telling you which one they're using. So uh, first on the list would be the EPA, which stands for Environmental Protection Agency. It is in the United States. It's uh, closest to real world uh, expectations. Uh, usually I've known a few people to get actually better than what that rating is at times. Example, I have a friend of mine who has a Kona EV. Uh, his rating is like 418, 415. And he's actually within town driving, been able to get 530 on a charge out of his vehicle. And he uses it for wow. Uber as well. Yeah. So there's that. And then, uh, it's a charge park overnight. Then they put it on a dyno run it up to highway speeds and down to highway city speeds. And, urbans, yeah. and then they figure out uh, by multiplying by 0 0.07. 0 0.7, the, I think. Yeah, well, 0 0.7, sorry. For yeah, to the, for the final result. And uh, that's usually where they get their ratings from. Yeah. Next on the list, WLTP, the Worldwide Harmonized Light Vehicles Test Procedure. This one is in the EU and tends to read about 13% higher than the real world. It's very strict about its conditions, so it's always tested at 23 degrees Celsius, I believe. And it's about 50% urban driving, 50% highway driving. And this particular, um, this particular method came about because of, a, of the Volkswagen Dieselgate scandal, which in short was where Volkswagen was was faking their emissions, basically, obviously on gas cars, but they were faking their emissions. Um, it wasn't real world, world conditions. After the vehicle was sold off the lot, they would change it so it got better gas mileage and and higher emissions. Next would be the NEDC, which is the New European Driving Cycle. It was actually uh, replaced by the WLTP. That's right, yeah. And uh, was last updated in 1997. It is widely optimistic. Uh, you could get, uh, on that rating, you were able to get anywhere from 20 to 30% over real world conditions. So you, your battery was really not actually as good as it says. And uh, it is actually still used by China, but they are phasing it out in favor of a new one. Yeah, the new one being CLTC. Um, just going back to the NEDC, that, if it was phased out in 1997, it probably didn't do anything but gas cars. Yeah, they used it a little bit until the WLTP came mm -hmm. out, but it, it wasn't very accurate. And, uh, and like you said, the Dieselgate scandal really made them realize they needed a new set, a new, new uh, rating. Because yeah. these ratings are also used with gasoline as well, not as just well. for electrics. Yeah, that's right. 
So the last on the list, the CLTC, which is the China Light Duty v Vehicle Test Cycle. Uh, it is what we would consider wildly optimistic. <clears throat> yeah. And from what I saw, it reads about 35% higher than EPA. And so it, I, I did look up an example and it was 42% in my example, higher from an EPA of 358, I believe, to, to the CLTC, which was saying it could get 508 kilometers. That's, that's ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous. However, let's, you know, going back to when you were talking about um, your buddy Henry mm -hmm. from Vancouver and the Kona electric that he's driving. Yep. And he's getting an extra 80 kilometers, maybe a little 90. Actually more about 100 because he's 418 and he's getting five, over, five, over five. Yeah. And, so uh, and he's doing all Uber with it mostly. Yeah. So truthfully, it, it all depends on your driving conditions. Yeah. And so I might say that, you know, you consider the, the conditions in China, probably a lot of city driving. Yep. Very congested, a lot of regen braking. Henry, your friend in Vancouver, is getting an extra, so if it's 100, it's it's just shy of 25%, so 22, 23% extra than what's what's advertised. And that was EPA and rating. That would have been EPA, so. exactly. So maybe it's not that unrealistic. 35 and 40% seem a little bit unrealistic, yep. but... If you consider where it is, the temperatures, especially like Canada, we're seeing cold temperatures. You heard Colin shivering earlier. <laughs> Anyways, so that's all for the four different types of range ratings. And, and I'll let Colin close off with yeah, a statement. And, and at the end of the day, electric vehicle range ratings are just an estimate. Just like the miles per gallon numbers yep. are just an estimate. For gas cars, they're not really ac actually that accurate as well because they are done in a, a testing place, you know, like mm -hmm. basically inside on a, on a dyno to get it, right? Yep. So just take it into consideration and it also depends on your speed, your driving style, of course, the temperature outside and the battery charge and of course the battery age. Well, that's it for now. I guess we can shut it off and thanks for watching. See you, See you later, later eh? eh?